I'm so glad I got to take those headphones off. Yes, I'm glad you got to take them off too, because now you're just talking to me. Yeah, and I look like Mickey Mouse with those stupid headphones on. Well, it's really helpful when making a podcast. Yeah, I guess so. From Straw Hut Media, <laughs> this is Randy Glanville Unfiltered. Brian. Hello, Brandy. How are you, Mr. Max? I know. I'm a married man. I'm a oh married my God. man. Let me see. How does it feel wearing it? Horrible. <laughs> it's, horrible. it's hard to get used to. I just keep touching it, you know? It, it I just is like thick. Hey. That's a thick one. I know. And it's like, I feel like I need to get it sized down. It's actually yeah, a little maybe. loose on me. Also, you can get like silicone ones that are less, that, that look great, but they're less um, uncomfortable. Oh, you like I just. You can wear that around just, your neck. Like Ooh, on the brace, like on that's a good idea because I'm like having a real hard time. With it's, it. it's a lot to get used <laughs> to. You're never, always touching I've it. I've never worn jewelry. So like, yeah, yeah it's hard. But, but anyway. Yeah. But you have to, you have to wear it. <laughs> I know. I know. I left it on the, I, I, after I shaved this morning, I left it on the counter See? and Ooh. yeah, whatever. And Max is like, don't forget your wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I used to take mine off to wash my hands all the time and I would lose it oh. constantly. And that was a big ass ring. Should I get insurance on it? Everyone said, like, the, the ring, the people who made the ring said we could. You should add it to your renter's insurance. Just, oh, okay. like, because you probably have a blanket policy. Yeah. Just let them know, and they'll, they'll make it a little more oh. expensive. <laughs> but you should add both of them on there. Okay. All right. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's I'm a good very, idea. very, very smart. Um, yeah. <laughs> Guys, huge announcement. Okay, okay, okay. We've been waiting for this. The world premiere of my rap song, Life of a Housewife is coming out on Saturday and Sunday. Well, Saturday first <laughs> on, with DJ Who Kid on Sirius XM Radio, Shade 45. And he's going to play the whole song. Oh, my God. And it's going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> Wait, what time is the is the show? Uh, well, the show starts on Saturday. It's at from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. And they repeat it twice. And then you can also listen to the show. Got it. They repeat it on Sunday. Sunday Got it. From okay. 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. Two chances so, to two hear chances, the premiere. The, the premiere, premiere. The world premiere of Life of a Housewife. Shady as fuck. Now, and you're going to love it. Are you going to do a music video? Well, that's the plan. Oh, yeah. And, it's going to um, be so good. I told Andy about it and he wants to hear it. And I'm excited. And oh, man. Okay. All right. Woo! Finally, I've been working on this for about six months. I know, I know. Working really hard. So this is something that's so important to me. I'm so excited. And it was so fun. (laughs) And stressful. (laughs) It was stress a lot. (laughs) Um, But you guys have to check it out. So that's DJ Who Kid, Sirius Sirius XM, Shade 45, Saturday and Sunday. You've got this. Let's listen. Do it, do it, do it. Do it for me. Okay, today. Today's episode. Yeah, we have Shane Lomas. Okay, do you know about Shane? Do you know who she is? Who? Do you, what? Tell me. Yeah, so it's so funny because I actually, she, I watched her on The Bachelor. Sure, of course. Many years ago, and I was obsessed with the way she did her hair because it was always perfect. It was like oh. she had the cutest, like always a ribbon and a poof and they, a... Do they have like a team for that? Like, did they have like no, a... No, I don't. I mean, I would Bachelor? say probably not. I don't know much about The Bachelor, but I did. I do remember watching that like probably 15 years ago. Things stick in my head when I like something. And then she had another show on E! And her brothers were on it and they were hot AF. Ooh. I was like, damn, is the whole family attractive? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Just yes. like good genes. Yes. And then she married Nick Ritchie, who we've also had on the podcast, and who um, she's now divorcing. So we are going like, to get into that a little bit. Like in the process of a divorce. Yes. And so, you know, we're just going to, we're going to have shoot the shit, have some girl talk. Yeah. Yeah. See how she's doing. Let's do it. (laughs) I have Shane Lamas here. Welcome to Brandy Glanville Unfiltered. How are you, beauty? I am good. I am, um, well, I mean, going through life. Life sucks right now. But other than that... (laughs) Yes, I kind of, I kind of knew a little bit about it, and and I watched you when you were on The Bachelor a long time ago, and you always had the cutest hairdos. I was like, I don't know if this girl's oh good for gosh. the Bachelor guy, but I love her hairdos. Like you're in a ribbon. 
Oh my God. That is so amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're blonde, you could literally like throw on a headband and it looks cute or like throw your hair in a hair bun. But yeah, I always tried to like do something. There was no hair and makeup. So it was kind of like free for all. Um, that was a fun experience. Yeah, that was pretty fun. No, you definitely had the cutest hair. And I was like, oh, I love her. But I didn't think you guys were a match. But that was, how many years ago was that? Oh, my God. So that was like, seriously, oh, my God. I was 21. I'm 36. Oh. I don't even know. I can't do math. So like. That's 15. That's 15 years ago. Well, and I still remember your hair. Oh, my God. Like, certain things stick with me when I like them. I'm just like, you know what I mean? I know. That is totally true. Because I remember the first time that I saw you ever on TV. I will never forget it. You were, like, in crutches. <laughs> and I'm like, she has got the best oh, ass. Thanks. Like, sh if anybody could, like, rock, <laughs> I just will never forget it. So, whenever I think of you, I think of, like... These beautiful <laughs> legs and like shorts oh, and crutches. Thank you. <laughs> like you just I had no, like it. I didn't even I didn't tell them I broke my leg when they called me for the show because I thought they were gonna go, Okay, well we don't want you. So I just showed up with my crutches going, Hi, I'm ready. You were like the cutest thing oh. ever and totally I was just like, Oh my god, like I this this I like her oh. a lot. Like she's just a no bullshit kind of gal. So I appreciate it. That was a rough time. <laughs> so that's what I remember. And then since then, you've been you've been through a lot. So tell us kind of like where your journey has gone. I mean, I know personally because I have you know friends that used to work with your ex that no longer work with him, um, and I kind of I know him as well. And I was kind of caught in the middle for a second, but. Um, just business stuff, but tell us like what what happened after the bachelor? How'd you meet your husband? You ha like what what's going on with that? So my ex husband, right? Very very important tidbit. Um, well, <laughs> almost soon. You know the drill. Um, yeah. God only knows when. Like I will have a party when that happens. <laughs> Um, so I basically married the worst person in the world to marry. As far allegedly, as like, allegedly, allegedly, right? In my opinion. Yes. yes. Allegedly. We just don't want you to get sued. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, well, I mean, yeah, that's true. We're allegedly. Just allegedly. Yeah. So I don't know how you do this. Like if I had a podcast, I would get in so much trouble. Oh, I do. I've been sued so many times. That's why I'm trying to help you not get sued. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Um, the times these days. So anyways, yes, I left The Bachelor and I did like an e-reality television show called Leave It to Lamas. And um, we did that for one season and it was just nuts. It was just too much for me. I was a line producer on it and behind the scenes as well. So it was like my family and me trying to be a boss of my family. And I, I just was not, it was not my thing. Like I just didn't want to be. Like, yeah. I kind of remember you have like two handsome brothers or maybe one. I can't remember. Yeah. But like, well, yeah it, it was, was my lot. brother. And then like, it was supposed to be like a, Oh shit. Shane show just kind of like about me and my just life. But of course, like my dad, for him to be in it, he had to be in all the episodes and we had to change the title. So it like became, you know, how that all goes. So I was like, whatever, like I, let's just, cause I was just trying to make my mom money, everybody money, you know, let's just roll the, the cameras. And so I didn't, I didn't want, I wasn't intending to become like a second Kardashian family at all. Like that is not my thing. Um, anyway, so we did leave it to Lamas and I was, it was just a lot. And my family was just nuts. And my brother went off and spent all his money and, you know, it was just too much. And I, I told E, I was like, look, I can't do it with my family anymore. So if you just want to do like a show around me and my life. So anyways, to make a long story short, we pulled Leave It to Lamas and um, I took like six months off and I was like, 
you know, since I just had an e show, I was like getting paid to do appearances back in the day when right, like you could show up to like a club yeah. and get fifty grand. So 50? I, <laughs> that's yeah, because I been, I'm getting like, well, I went to Australia for fifty, but here it's like twenty. But they're not well, doing now, it so much anymore. Yeah. yeah, remember like back in the day, like it was, I mean, legit legit and i mean now like you'd be lucky if they offered you know i don't even know i but so um we could ask scott Disket. i'm sure he knows um <laughs> i'm sure he's getting a lot more than either of us yeah, would be getting yeah that's like his whole spiel so um although i don't know him personally but um what was I going to say? I have no idea. I totally forgot. Oh, no. After Leave It to Llamas, like where, like you decided to kind of, you did, your, you know, your appearances and then you, I'm guessing you, that's how you met your husband or how did that happen? Yeah. So we, I was like, my step, ex stepmother, Shauna Sands, who is just a nightmare and a half, asked me to go to Las Vegas with her um, for my little sister at the time she was eight years old, her cheerleading competition. We're going to drive all together, all of my sisters and Shauna. We're going to drive to Vegas. And I'm like, sure. What I, I was, you know, kind of like hanging out with my little sisters at the time. They were all super young. So we drive to Vegas. Shauna and I get into a massive fight because she wants to bring in her alcoholic beverage to the cheerleading competition <laughs> at the forum at Caesars. Right. And I'm like, you can't. Yeah, it's Vegas. But like, this is. We're here for like a convention style cheerleading competition. For, like it's not kids. Vegas. <laughs> right. Right. So we got into an argument and I was just like, you know what? Instead of like adding fuel to the fire, I was like, I'm just going to step away. I'll be back for the awards. And I go sit down and going through my phone, like trying to figure out either I'm going to fly home. Like I cannot deal with Sean anymore. And, um, Lonnie, I'm sure you know, um, Lonnie, Lonnie, what's his name? He, Lonnie, he like runs, he used to run like Dolce and all like the big clubs and stuff. Anyways, um, Lonnie Moore, I think is what his name is. So he's always like in Vegas and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to see like if he's here and He's like, yeah, I'll meet you. I'm, I'm going to come, I'm going to come right down. I'm like, oh, you're here. And so literally I'm sitting there waiting and in walks n this guy in a bathrobe with <laughs> painted black fingernails, all like drunk and sits down. And mind you, like I'm in a fedora and I'm like not Vegas mode. I'm like here with my family. And he goes, so hello. And I'm like, oh. I, I mean, I just didn't even give him the time of day. And um, and he's like, hello. I'm like, hi. He's like, so what's your story? And I'm like, <laughs> um, none of your business. Like, I'm good. Like, just please, I'm not in the mood, you know. And in hindsight, Lonnie Moore was his friends and sent Nick Ritchie to the bar <laughs> where I was and was like, I'm right. a hot blonde. Go meet her. And he tries to hit on me. I was not interested He's like, D do you not know who I am? And I'm like, oh, God, no, I don't. <laughs> and he's like, um, the dirty, the dirty dot com. And back in the day, like it was just TMZ and like Perez Hilton and like yeah. Hollywood. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. weren't, it wasn't like blogs were like big. big I was right. like, I have no idea what the dirty <laughs> dot com is. And he's, anyways, he was just, I was not, not with it. But long story short, because of Shauna Sands and her, she's just um, too much. I couldn't handle it. So I ended up going out with him that night and we got married. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, not that night though. Yes. That night. You got married that night? The day you met him, you got married. After he was gross with his nail polish and Nails. the dirty, don't you know who yeah. I am? Yeah. Huh. Wow. I know. So that is a, quite I mean, a story. I mean, there's a lot. Like you know, one day we can get like into it and how it all <laughs> kind of went from ew to like. I think I could like love this guy because it had nothing to do with 
like in when I think about it, I absolutely worst idea. Don't ever like. I got married in Vegas too, so don't worry. (laughs) I mean, but I was like in my mind, I was like, I have okay, we can get it annulled. Like I always try to think like where I was at mentally when I did that. Um. Anyways. We got married and the next day, like, we wake up and I kind of forgot that, like, people might find out, like, I don't know, you know, who am I, right? So, like, who really cares? But he might write the story. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Or, (laughs) yeah, little did I know that he is, like, a theme. Anyways, so, um, it says Shane Lamas marries Nick Ritchie from the dirty.com. And I'm like... Okay, and he and he's like, wait, what? Your name is before my name? Like, I got the first billing credit? And I'm like, oh my God, what? Who are you? The dirty.com? Like, who are you? First of all, I have to say, um, I have two teenage boys who are hairy. I'm just going to say it. Um, there's hair everywhere. That's gross. And it is disgusting. That's gross. Um, I don't use their bathroom unless I absolutely have to. But a while back, I got Mason this Manscaped kit. And so I know it's all looking good and it's great, but I just don't want that. You got to clean up after yourself. You told him the importance of trimming. I absolutely did. And keeping did. it tight. Tight and light <laughs> with the hair. You're like your balls will thank you. I think that's their motto. It says here, yeah. Um, so it's perfect timing because now my 15 year old is a hairy, Mc Harry too. Trim it up. And he said dad was going to get him like a professional one. I'm like, oh, oh wait, wait one minute. <laughs> And Manscaped just sent us like everything you could ever need. I know. It's a kid I got Mason. It is so nice. Clean your balls, wax your balls. Don't want to, don't wax your balls. That would <laughs> really- Don't wax no, your balls. Um, mm, nope. Cause you know that that skin grows and it pulls your skin when you oh, wax and it's just God. gonna get. So we need these, these shavers and all this grooming stuff for the boys in my life. And there's many of you, all my gay boys and my straight boys and mostly my teenagers that live upstairs and are gross and i love them tell tell me what do you do to manscape i have a pair of uh clippers that i just take <laughs> down there this is, feels really awkward <laughs> <laughs> this is weird um well let's uh, th- like it, listen i gotta talk to you about it because i don't like a man that is like full back hair and front hair i mean you don't have to necessarily Tell me about your ball situation. Oh, well, I don't have, that's the only place I got hair. I mean, I don't really? have, I mean, I have some chest. I keep that trim too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, like, but I don't have any back like, hair, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully, yet. not yet. Yeah, you'll get some Knock probably. on wood. Um, yeah, let's <laughs> do that. Cause I had a boyfriend that I shaved his back. Yeah, I'm sweet like that, but it was more for me than him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you're hairy, and Manscaped is the only brand dedicated to below the waist grooming. Well, you know, you could do whatever you want. And their brand new shaving tools just dropped right in time for Pride. Hello. Boom, boom. Uh, Manscaped is the only brand, again, dedicated to your balls and to all your bodily hair for men. I mean, women, you can use it too. I'm not going to try because I would Jake hurt my. Jake uses his ball deodorant. He's going to, he's going to, you're not getting it. <laughs> I know, not. I don't want it. I'm but just it, curious. I, you know what? The ball, like there's a saying sweaty balls for sweaty a reason. Balls. Sweaty balls. Because balls get sweaty. And this, and this is, is like. this is ball toner. Yeah. I really, I'm excited for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for all of you men. So if you're hairy. I need a trim. I need a trim. And you got, you, you have to, you got to like Keep as much tight. as, exactly. <laughs> as much as you like, like women groomed. Well, I don't know if all of you even care, but I groom to keep it tight and keep it right. Um, boys do it too. Cause no one likes to floss with pubic hair after <laughs> something happens. Gross. I know it's gross, but it's, it's true. If you leave it long, it, yep. there's a lot of that. Well. So if you guys want to get what I have for my son, <laughs> sounds weird. <laughs> and Ryan keeps making a triangle right around this his area. I'm like, just saying that's where you, that's the main part to keep tight. But you're not saying it. You're just making a weird, <laughs> no, they can't hear that triangle. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm very uncomfortable right now. Um, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Brandy, B-R-N-B-R-A-N-D-I at manscaped.com. We're, he's, we're doing the triangle now. Manscaped, we should show them that. They, okay. I think they would like to use it. I'll show them. Manscaped. Yeah. Uh, Manscaped, your balls will thank you. Um, so if you want to be like us, that's uh, you get 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use my code Brandy B R A N D I. Prune your pubes for pride season. That was written by Ryan clearly with Manscaped. Prune your pubes for pride. You don't want to prune because that just sounds like you're going to accidentally like take off a ball. Uh, I feel like you prune the hedges, and that is no. I don't, that's how you. That's what you call it when you're then a ball like, like Edward an old man's ball like could look like fancy. a prune. I just feel like I feel like a wrinkled it's ball. A different thing. That's a fruit. <laughs> that's dried prune, fruit. Prune your pubes. <laughs> I, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> Let's just stick to the triangle that no okay. one can see. And boom. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, I have to put on regular headphones. One second. Yeah, no worries. Oh, I hate the way I look in these headphones. They're so big. <laughs> now I look like an alien. <laughs> if I had some, I'd put some on to join you, but I'd like, you don't have these things? I do, but my kids have them all upstairs and they're all fucked up. You know what I mean? The kids, yeah. I have boys, everything's like broken. The wires are broken and they still all my shit. Do they really even boys? All, all my chargers. Like right, if I, I, right. I get a charger, I have them, all the rooms and then all the chargers are gone. And so <laughs> you know how it goes. And then yes, they take them to I, their dads. And I'm like, where the fuck are all my chargers? And I'm like, bring them home from your dads because they're expensive. Oh, don't even get me started with that whole dads. You Like I've done every system imaginable with the clothes and me labeling moms like but it, it's just oh so you're are you guys in that phase right now like so wait you got married day you met and then you were together for quite some time 12 years yes Fuck. that is i mean that is a long successful marriage i mean totally. i think totally I mean, I don't see it. Like when people say they got a divorce, it's not that it failed. It's just that the relationship came to, it came to an end, you know? And Absolutely. That's, 100%. that's kind of it. Like we grow and sometimes we grow apart. Um, and so that's exactly like what happened. And there, we just kind of like, there was no love and I was unhappy and he was unhappy. And it, to be honest, in the beginning of our divorce, we agreed and it was like, okay, we're doing this. But I actually pulled the trigger and filed. Yeah. And it became now his ego was ruined and he was going to war. When in reality, we both had agreed to divorce and to do this amicably. We were, I was like, we can be like the role model co parents. You know what I mean? Like, and be best friends. And it went from that to his whole entire ego got smashed because I filed first. And I, I mean, he just put, he's put me through hell and back the last year. It's crazy that when you love someone so much at a certain point, then you go through the divorce. It's crazy how much hatred can come out. And like the person that you love more than anything in the world, then you see this person literally trying to ruin your life. I mean, I went through it literally. as well. Like literally just going like, I want you to end up with nothing. And I don't care if you and my kids are, have no place to live. You know what I mean? Like it's, 100%. Yeah, it's so bizarre. And to me it's, how it's, yeah. It's like, it's mind boggling because I was so naive to think that like, oh, I don't need to pull the money out now. Like, obviously, it's our money. And he will, you know, he's not going to leave me with nothing. Oh, my God. I was beyond, like, the man sold my car one day. Like, I didn't have a vehicle to take my children to private school in. I'm, like, literally never paid a bill in our entire marriage. Yeah, was he was the that. one that did that. And it's like, okay. He doesn't care if I like as far as even till today, like if I don't have money in my account, who he just doesn't care, yeah. doesn't care. 
And that I'm like the mother of his children. I mean, and I I'm telling you, just... divorce brings out the worst. I was in the same boat. I like I only had a credit card that I used for everything and he paid all the bills. And then he when we got, you know, separated, he canceled my credit card. I didn't know it. I'm at the grocery store buying diapers for our children and like all you know, everything for the kids and groceries declined after it's like $500. And I'm, can you call the bank? Um, it's just so crazy because they don't really think about the fact that you are the mother of their children and this affects the kids. It's like, it's like, I have to win. Right. 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 It, it's more or less like, she's not my problem anymore. Yep. She needs to figure it out. She's an adult. Like I'm going to, and granted there are men that get a divorce and take care of their oh, yeah, there you are. Know, right but i didn't marry one of those no and i'm not did I. One. <laughs> and unfortunately mine is a really big narcissist and so there's really no wiggle room with anything like i have to just accept like i can't with him because i literally it, it just goes back and forth. There's never any, I mean, and what he says to the children and how he brings in our children into it. Like he didn't make spousal support payment. And I live off of that. Like right. literally, I'm like, I have $10 in my account. Like you're in the court document that you signed, that we signed, like this, you're supposed, and he'll get a job. Da, 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 and it's just like, oh my God. I mean, it's just a pure sick cycle. And it's yeah. like, no, 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 no. When we were married, I made money too, but I just gave it to you. I don't right. even think I saw a check ever that I made. It literally was just, and it's like, I've never, ever seen somebody want somebody to fail so bad than he wants me to fail. I mean, I have friends that have recently split working with him, and he literally is on a rampage to, allegedly, because I'm hearing one side, to ruin their business. And I don't understand, like, there, there, there has to be a way, well, you should actually write, a, I wrote a book about it, like, any like when people are getting married and like make sure your name is on the house make sure because mine like i didn't have anything when we left and i signed my name off the house because i signed whatever he put in front of me not knowing he was cheating um so like really wow. you should write a book about like what you would have done like what like for young women getting married like make sure you have your you know your own financial stability make sure you have your own money your own checking account because i didn't i wish i would have known you when you started because i could have helped you <laughs> um right but, you know it does i mean it will get better it's gonna take when? A, a, a decade <laughs> it's gonna take a decade i'm just Cause saying it's literally been like a year like to, I filed in May of last year. So it's been pretty much a year. And I'm like, <sighs> it's been wow. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm literally like, we have 50 50 custody. Um, even though like he rents like a five bedroom furnished house on the beach and I have the, well, a rental for my kids, but I created a home again for my children. And yeah. Um, it's just, it's, he took everything. Nothing was in my name. So it's not like he took it away from me. I just, I didn't Never have anything. Yeah, like I'm, literally my phone was shut off because he called AT&T was like, just, so I had to walk into AT&T and be like, you know, and you need your own phone service. And then he needed to call to say that I could take my number. It's like, I felt like a child again. And yeah. I mean, just the littlest stuff like today, the trash guy just drives by my tra two trash cans and I'm running down the street. I'm like, you forgot my trash. <laughs> He's like, ma'am, ma'am, you need to pay your bill. And I'm like, so where does my tax money go? So I have to pay for the trash now. Unfortunately, because we all have to pay for that. I literally like it's all new to me. Like I get it. It's and I'm not complaining or asking for any. No, I mean, but it's 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 
it's life. You, you know, I came out of my marriage at 36, no credit because I didn't need None. any because like Ed, Ed, Eddie got everything. I had my Range Rover and this and that. It all got taken away. And speaking of broken legs, I didn't know my insurance, my medical insurance was canceled. So when I broke my leg, I had no medical insurance. That cost me $50,000, that leg. And I mean, it was just, it was such a shit show. And I literally was in the place that you're in now, um, trying to co-parent. Like he would send the kids back to me with the with the same clothes I sent them to his right. house in. Because God forbid I get the nice clothes that he has at his house. And it was, I'm like, I would, it's for the kids. Like put them in nice clothes. Like why are we like being petty like this? But divorce brings out the worst in people, unfortunately. And it takes a while to get through it. But like what? I've been pushed to a limit that like I he has made me feel things for him that I never have felt for anybody else before like true anger and like just and I just breathe but literally it's it's the evilness like it's it of the petty of of just why you know what I mean why And even to the point of where, like, when the kids go to him, he does fun things, right? Like, he'll take them to Cabo and da-da-da-da-da. And so he's doing like that when it's the I'm Disneyland, like, it's the, the Disneyland dad thing. I have the, my kids are on vacation every other week with their dad. Like that, right. that was the whole. It, it's it is such a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason because that's what dads do when they have money and they get a divorce and they want to punish the ex for some reason. He, like he's the one that cheated on me. Right, and I'm right, getting punished. Right, right. And if you and guys that makes agree- it even worse. Right. For you. But if you guys agreed to get a divorce, like this shouldn't be happening. Like it shouldn't No, I agree. I mean no but I understand divorce is not fun for anybody and you know it will bring out the nastiness, but like he's gone way beyond below the nastiness and like it's just sickening i mean i try and call my dad and talk to him about it like how the hell did you get through like seven eight divorces like you need to break this down for me (laughs) was he married that oh my god i I love your dad because we did um, a show together and he was just the sweetest most like he was the best gentleman but like i did not realize he was married that many times so i love my dad and he's like (laughs) such a lover and like yes so he's been married a a few times and literally he just stopped paying his last like my sister just turned like 18 like seven months ago so like He's been paying child support since my brother, my brother's 38 <laughs> to just six months ago. Right. And I'm just like you. And he says, daughter, I never missed a payment, even though there was no work going, you know, in. And trust me, it's not like I wanted to pay her. Like, I get it. But at the end of the day, when you're in a marriage that two agree, like, you're going to be the breadwinner. You're, we're going to put all the baskets in your basket because I'm going to be home with the kids and being the mother. Which is the hardest, the hardest job in the world is being a mom. It really is. The hardest job in the world. And then to be completely just kicked to the curb when, you know, I'm not his arm candy anymore or what have you. It's just, it's just sad. It really is sad. And I do need to write a book. Yeah. And (laughs) honestly, writing stuff down, it's like so cathartic. And even if you don't do anything with it, like writing shit down, your anger, put it on paper because it kind of frees you a little bit to like breathe it out. Like you, you get rid of it a little bit when you write it down. Um, if you were married for 12 years, isn't half of everything yours? Yes, it is. But he is, he's just fighting it and prolonging it and dragging it on. And the courts right now are a nightmare because yeah. of COVID. So right. they're like, they're like a year. So it's like, we've been to court via Zoom like twice, but it, 
and we agreed on a deal and it, it's he's supposed to go through with the deal and transfer half of what he had but he's so shady about his business being he's just it's like you really don't have you have to get like um a forensic accountant which is super expensive oh, we did that we okay. did that yeah i spent like 12 grand on one and you know what ended up happening for eddie and i like we fought for over two years and we wasted all of the money we could have been we could have totally. split on our divorce so when we did finally 100%. come to a deal we really didn't have anything to split anymore and it, and it's like i wish i could talk some sense into these people that are getting divorced like learn from my mistakes go and mediate totally. so you save your fucking money i mean but we were so angry and pissed like we wanted to fight I, right ugh. totally but and that's him that's that's and i understand like you had every right to want to fight too because you felt just the injustice that was done you know right. what i mean Absolutely. but me like we agreed this was like and then all of a sudden because his ego because i went you know and in, in an interview i said how we hadn't had sex in a year all of a sudden he's getting text messages from his friends like like you you know weren't fucking your wife for a full year and like his just whole ego is just when i was just saying look we just grew this, up yeah, like this is why we're getting a divorce like because yes like, we haven't been intimate in a year and what's the point like totally it, it was gone i don't think that's and anything. i would like to be touched please thank yes. you so i'm just <laughs> like and i'm sure he would too you know what i mean yeah that's and just not healthy like, he's at just that point. yeah He's turned it into a war and that's where we're at. Like literally I text him the other day. I'm like, all he was just going on. He's like, you made this bed. Now you have to live in it. I go, what do you mean? What bed did I make? All I wanted was a divorce Yeah. and you wanted war. And now we're somewhere in the middle and it sucks. Like it totally sucks when we could have just agreed and we don't even need lawyers. You know what right. I mean? But He's Nick Ritchie and, you know. He's a fighter. Whatever. Well, do you, do you see, like, is there anyone in your life that could, like, talk to, like, mediate just with, not legally, but, like. We talk have had everybody and our, like, everybody gives up because he's just so like that. Like, he's impossible. Literally, yeah. it just. Well, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I mean, I, I feel like it's almost deja vu. And I wish I knew you personally before like, I know. this all happened because I could have helped you. I, I, I really tell young people, like, make sure things are in your name. Make sure you have your own accounts. Um, I have a friend going through, like, possibly getting a divorce. Nothing's in her name. Like, you need to start getting money at, like, and putting it away in your own account. Like, you can't. You know, and she's in a loveless marriage and again, no sex, you know, it's like we're getting to an age when you're in your 30s and 40s. Like it, it's this is our prime of our right. lives. We need to be happy. And totally. Like, I don't I don't totally. understand. Is he did he move on with anyone yet? Maybe when he, I wish happens? I, I yeah. like may I, I pray at night that he just finds a girlfriend um, mm -hmm. or or has somebody like just because he'll just leave me alone and just you know what I mean it's it's just no he he and you know I mean I'm sure he's whatever but not that anybody serious that he's introduced right. to the kids but I feel like I I know Nick th didn't he have like um some medical issue or he has he has MS that's what it was yeah because I had him on my yeah. podcast a while ago so, so he um he was diagnosed with MS. Oh gosh, I want to say like six or seven years ago, um, and he doesn't really help his cause with that. He drinks alcohol. I mean, all the things that you're not supposed to do. Right. And he, he's got his own demons and anger inside of him. Um, but I think like this MS, like you know, and then. He'll say the MS is my fault, which your he fault? said the other day. Wait, it's your fault? Yeah, How it's my I... fault that he has How, MS. How is that possible? I caused him to literally have MS. And I'm like, wait, is that even... Sci 
I was thinking in my mind, because he's so like drilling in my head. In my mind, is that even possible? It's Could not. I have gone, like, <laughs> Letting you know, it's not. But, you know. So anyways, that's where I'm at right now. I'm kind of just, you know, trying to figure out my single life, like, and, and all this. It's hard. And the times right now, the world, every, I mean, it's Honestly, just- we, you have to figure out that you don't need a man. Um, you can do anything by yourself. It's just hard when you come out of having someone taking care of you. And I was in the same boat to learn everything all at once, like you have to learn, oh, I have to pay this bill, this bill, this bill. And like, it's a lot. It's overwhelming. You have to work on your credit. Like no one wanted to rent me a house because I didn't have credit. Like in my first car, I had to, at 36, I had to have my dad co-sign for me. I'm like, this yep. is insane. But, you know, you'll get through it. You're going to get stronger. It will, it will die down. It takes time. Just try not to, if I could give you any advice, just try not to push the buttons. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's just not worth it. It's so unhealthy. Totally. Like, I, he would want to fight. Like, he would, like, he knows I'd push him. He would, and it's just unhealthy. I was sick. I was, I weighed like nothing. I was so, I was yeah. like divorced diet. I looked like super gaunt. I was, I was like worried about me. I'm like, I'm stressed out all of the fucking time. And I'm taking care of two kids and I don't yeah. know how I'm going to pay my bills. Like it's, it's a lot of stress. I wish I had that stress right now because I gained some weight over COVID. And oh I'd my like to- <laughs> God, you are no. tiny. Stop it. No, I promise. I don't fit in anything. Like this is a swimsuit cover up because it's loose. Um, I mean, but yeah, I, but, but were you just in it. Mexico? I think I read somewhere you were just in Mexico. So I maybe was in you... Mexico at a wedding, but I did not <laughs> put a bathing suit on. I did. I did. I like, don't some... put bathing suits on either. And if I do, they're like the long sleeve ones. Well, <laughs> I, I, all of mine are tiny, and none of them are fitting right now. But I, by the twenty fifth, by the twentieth, I'm going to be back to a size four. What? That's happening. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep your word to that. All right. I'm going to send you daily screenshots of my scale. No, I really, <laughs> oh I'm not going to. I don't even I'm own gonna, one. I hate I'm not working weigh out. Myself. I do too, but I'm figuring out ways, like, especially with medication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my doctor gave me some medication that's supposed to, like, you're not supposed to um, get hungry. Still yeah. hungry, but I'm not eating as much. So. Yeah. We'll yeah. see, because my cholesterol is so high. Blah, blah. Yeah, um, well, when we get older, all these fun things start yes, to happen. They do, but you when, can do this, like, I promise. Tw- when I was 19, 18, just ran around L.A. drinking coffee and like, you know. Oh. Well, Anyways. You have a young spirit. Thank you. You were awesome. I love you. And I feel <laughs> like... I could talk to you for hours and pick your brain about <laughs> everything well, I that do, I'm going I feel like right I'm now. going to have to sit down with you and, yeah. <laughs> and talk to you about a few things. Um, but we will do that. It was so lovely catching up with you. You too. And have I, a great rest of the week. Okay? You too, babe. All right. Stay strong. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Honestly, it was a really nice interview like i informational yeah like i think a lot of people can get a lot of information and value out of it yeah i mean it's i was kind of in her same exact place except i do know how to potty potty train my kids yeah exact same same age coming out of a divorce with no idea how to take care of myself in a lot of ways yes i had i mean i had certain skills like obviously i could be a mom and you know how old were your kids at that time they were two and six. Do you know how, what her age? I, I, yeah, I think we didn't ask, but um, she's, you know, she's been on reality TV a few times. She's, you know, got yeah. this very famous family. Yeah. I worked with her dad. He's super yeah. kind, but like, I can't believe he's been married seven times. I know. And he seems like he's the good, uh, the good kind yeah, of Yeah, right. <laughs> guy. Oh, but I feel really, really bad for her. Bader Parks is calling me right now and I cannot answer. Sorry, guys. Um, I just like, I can't wait for you guys. I do hope you guys get together and I hope that you can just shed some information. Give her, give, you know. Shed some- I want to. I feel like she needs some guidance. She's like 
She's hurting right now. Right. And she doesn't, it's hard when you're, you really don't know what to do, where your next dollar is coming from, how to co parent. And I think, you know, I think Nick likes me a little bit, not likes, like, and, you know, I think yeah. that maybe I could be a mediator for them a little, possibly. Yeah. You think that'd be a positive thing to have <sighs> some kind of mediator? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, About you like, can lose all of your all money because you're fighting over it and you're so mad you know? and you want to punish the other person. Yeah, I get that. And, yeah. you know, they're in the public eye to an extent. He could write whatever he wants on his, you know, the dirty or whatever he's doing now. And she can do interviews and talk about him. And it's, you know, I feel like I did all of those things. <laughs> Don't know that it helped. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe I can help her down the road. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I I hope you guys make it happen because that, that that's really great. No, she she's a, like, she's lovely. She seems really lovely. Yeah. yeah, she seems very grounded. And I thought her closet was a little messy. <laughs> but and she couldn't figure out her camera I, situation. I we still just only saw like the half of her face. <laughs> Every once in a while we saw her beautiful smile. But yeah. you know, I yeah, I'm gonna have to help that one out. Yeah. Um, but let's do a haiku. Let's do a haiku. Because it's over. Let's do a haiku. Wait, before we do the haiku, do you wanna to what? <gasps> hey guys, huge news, big, huge. Okay, huge. we've been waiting for this. My rap song, my new song, world debut this Saturday, which the date is... <laughs> <laughs> the date is the 11th. June 11th, and you can find it on... Um, this huge DJ, DJ Who Kid, is going to release it on his radio station on Sirius XM. It's called Shade 45, and it's going to be playing all day Saturday and all day Sunday. And it's called Life of a Housewife, and he will also be interviewing me um, for the, the release. And I am so excited to share it with you. So please, again, you have to hear it, and then you can download it on anywhere you can get I think it's going to be on Spotify, da 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 da, da all the places. Um, again, that is Saturday and Sunday with DJ Who Kid, and it's on Sirius XM Shade 45, and it is a shady song, so you're going to want to listen I to it. I cannot wait Boom. to hear the whole thing. I am so excited. Okay. Diamonds, peaches, apples, <laughs> oh, juice. Now I you're just teasing. <laughs> Na was that our haiku yeah <laughs> okay. also part of my song bye thanks for listening to brandy glanville unfiltered download new episodes every week and if you haven't already subscribe and be sure to leave us a rating and review and while you're at it check out some of the other great shows available on straw hut media